Yeah. Please tell me that I can't, that I won't, that I fail, that I'll never make it out. Yeah. Please that tell me the sports show. You are here. We are breaking down every team, every division, the whole season long. We're doing it with the Adam Hulse at Adam Hulse Sports on Twitter. Professional NFL writer for Sports Kita. We are in the NFC East. This one, we kind of talked about it off air. This whole division is throwing me for a loop because we've got the NFC West in there, the AFC East in there. They all play each other. The theme, and we've mentioned this in other episodes throughout the NFL, is kind of really one at the top one wild card contender and two teams that just aren't going to make it this division is kind of more split for me you got two teams that could finish at the top and you got the two teams that are going to finish at the bottom now we're in the top tier when we talk about Dallas you've said no team has won the NFC East twice Philly won it last year and Dallas seems to be the only one that could steal that title this year so you got to be feeling good yeah I mean I love how the Cowboys look this year this is definitely a two team divisional race in my opinion these are also between the Cowboys and the Eagles, two of the three best teams in the NFC conference, in my opinion. And you can make the case that they are the two best teams with San Francisco mixed in that top three as well. Top heavy division, top heavy conference, and the Cowboys are right in that mix. It's all true. Seattle may be being the wild card if you want to take that list of four. Dallas stats, 12 and five last year, fourth in points per game, fifth in points per game on defense. So both sides showing up. Although overall, they were only 18th in the pass but they were eighth in the rush question mark there of course is that Pollard got hurt we'll be able to bounce back defensively though they were ninth against the pass but 22nd against the rush which is actually a fairly surprising stat to me because we know how good that defensive that interior defense is guys in the conversation for defense of the year and yet still 22nd against the run here's the stats that really blew my mind they were third in protecting Prescott fourth in the NFL in sack and the big one they never lost twice all year the Cowboys never lost twice if they took the loss they won the next week and they at least won the game after that every win was followed by a win every win after a loss was followed by another win Dak finishes at QB 18 with 23 and 15 through the air running back number eight with Pollard nine on the ground three through the air and wide receiver five with CD Lamb nine through the air but that was really all they had so everybody knew with Dallas we needed to plus up the wide receiver we need to plus up the offense do you disagree you talked about one of their weaknesses being the stopping the run and that's why they went with Maisie Smith in the first round of the NFL draft. That's exactly what he is, is he's a run-stopping defensive lineman. It was one of those picks that everybody, you know, wasn't one of those sexy picks. A lot of people were like, oh, really? That's who they took? But it, he directly addressed arguably their biggest weakness from last season. That was one of the weaknesses. The other big weakness, of course, was Dak's interceptions. He threw a lot of interceptions last year, second most in the NFL, despite missing five games. So that's kind of alarming. But when I look at Dak and the rest of his career, interceptions have not been a trend for his career. I think last year was more of an outlier. Less interceptions, better stopping the run. I'm thinking big things for my Cowboys. We've talked about this before, too. Interceptions are not the big telling tale that they used to be for the NFL. Most of the top guys were real high in interceptions. You know, Mahomes and Burrow throw a whole lot of interceptions also. Mahomes had 12, Allen had 18, Burrow had 12. Yeah. Those are in line with, you know, Geno Smith had 11, Fields had 11, Kirk Cousins had 14, you know, the playoff guys. Interceptions just not such a big, big thing anymore. Herbert with 10, Rodgers with 12. So your top guys actually are all double digit INT guys. So if you're at home and, and you're looking at your fantasy stats and you're looking at those interceptions, that just means guys are trying to win games more often than not they actually do so let's look at the Dallas record and let's get through it figure out where we're going to be at the end of the season all done live we have no idea how this is going to finish out we take it game by game and the first game is the Giants in the last episode we gave Dallas the win despite the fact that it's week one just Dallas a better team Giants kind of in a regression mess mode right now yeah and you know like this feels like the annual Sunday night kickoff game right it feels like every year now it's like the Giants and Cowboys play week one on primetime I mentioned that on the Giants episode too in this version yeah. the Cowboys the much better team gave them the win absolutely as you should have week two they play the Jets this is a fun week two game kind of wish it was a little later in the season when teams were a little more dialed in but Prescott Rogers you're used to this being Green Bay in Dallas but now it's Dallas and the Jets and honestly the Jets have a better team I think than Dax had to face when he's played Aaron Rodgers in the past this could definitely be a tricky game for the Cowboys Jets and Rodgers might be a team that gets better as the year goes on because of all 
you know, the changes with getting the new quarterback. Sometimes it takes a couple weeks to warm up to it. Because of that in particular, I'm going to favor the Cowboys in this one. I get that. I'm also taking the Cowboys. The Cowboys are at home. Rodgers typically starts off slow, even with an improved team. I think for me, the running back situation is going to kind of be the telling tale for this game. But I will give Dallas the win right now. Then they go to Arizona. We both pretty down on Arizona. Not a lot of bright spots in Arizona, we don't think. And not enough to beat Dallas in week three. Yeah, I mean, Arizona is not going to win very many games at all this year, in my opinion. And the Cowboys aren't one of them. We talk about the schedules. This is why we're breaking every team down by the schedule. We're doing it live. This is not laid out. We take this game by game. So week four, New England comes to Dallas. We talked about the mess. I love Belichick. Anybody can pull this off. It's Belichick. I just don't think they do it. The schedule for Dallas is laid out real nice, especially for the first half. Week four, I think they beat New England at home. Yeah, I mean, I agree. The schedule is definitely in the Cowboys' favor for this opening part of the season. In New England, maybe I'd give them a little bit of a better chance. But in Dallas, I mean, again, go position by position with the Patriots and Cowboys. The Cowboys are probably better at every single position group. Give me the Cowboys. At San Francisco, week five, I actually gave Dallas a loss at San Francisco because of San Francisco's defense. You gave them the win. Again, another classic matchup. This one's a little more hyped up as far as offense. I say I expect to see a lot more offense in this one. And that's hard to expect from San Francisco's quarterback situation this year. I think these two teams match up well. Other than that quarterback position, we have a split in the result. Now, I'll fully acknowledge that in San Francisco, the 49ers should win this game. So me picking Dallas is a mini upset pick and maybe a little bit of a bias pick as well. But Dak Prescott looking for his revenge after getting eliminated two years in a row by the 49ers in the playoffs. He'll face them in San Francisco and I think he's going to get the win in this one. Week six, continue the road games in LA. They face the Chargers. Chargers got a much better offense than a lot of the teams that Dallas will have faced at this point. Dallas has an improved offense and the Chargers don't have historically great defense. So for that reason, I give Dallas the win against the Chargers. This game is one of those situations that, you know, we talk about with schedule, right? I think the Cowboys are a better team than the Chargers. That's not the only thing that factors into picking these wins and losses. I keep saying it. Who you play, where you play, and when you play. All three of those factors definitely matter. It's not just who's the better team. Factoring all of that in, I'm actually going to give the Chargers the win here, and I'm giving the Cowboys their first loss of the season. There you go. So we both give the Cowboys one loss going into the bye in week seven. Different games. It's interesting. Again, we talk about the schedule, but we got them set up pretty nice going into the bye with one loss, and then they come out of the bye against the Rams, in which we both gave Dallas the win, even if Cooper Cup and Stafford are heating up. Just Dallas probably a better team overall. Again, for me, especially on the defensive side of the ball. So through week eight, seven and one. Yeah, I mean, Dallas is the better team than the Rams, whether Stafford is playing or not. And the bye week definitely matter. Most head coaches have that winning record coming off of a bye. It is a real thing. It is a real factor. Give me the Cowboys. The Cowboys beat Cincinnati last year. They swept the Giants. They beat Miami. They beat Philly. They beat Tampa in the playoffs. They go to Philadelphia in week nine. Dallas was already a good team. I think that they made improvements. They needed to make improvements on the offense, especially at the wide receiver position. I think they did it. Question mark for me is Pollard. We finally get a divisional game and it's a good one in week nine. It's in Philly because it's in Philly. I got to give Philly the win, but I think this is going to be a really good game. I go a lot of these divisional with, you know, when there's two teams that are really good or competing for that division crown, I tend to really like home home split. This is another one of those situations for me where I'll go home home type of split. So give me the Eagles in round one. Versus the Giants, we already gave Dallas the win. They're at home. Giants just not really the team that everybody kind of thinks they are. But I don't know if that's really so much of a bold statement to make either. No, I mean, I think they were a fluke last year and I don't see them be the Cowboys this year. I think the Giants bring a good running game in. I think the defense a little more figured out. Dallas gets the win. They go to Carolina, one of our earliest episodes. Go back and check that Carolina episode out. I promise you will be surprised. Guarantee it. Dallas gets the win at Carolina for both of us here. Dallas also gets the win against Washington in the following week uh, with Washington coming to Dallas. You said you'll be surprised with the Carolina episode. I mean, you surprised me in that Carolina episode. Maybe the biggest shock 
moniker of this entire series so far. So if you haven't listened to that episode, that's definitely a good one to listen to. Smoking hot. Yep. Get burned. Be mm-hmm. careful. Be careful with it. Don't touch your radio dial. Let get the time to cool off mm-hmm. after you listen to that one. Week 13, Seattle comes to Dallas. Again, this should be a great game. This is going to be a telling game for both teams. It's week 13. Playoff pictures are starting to materialize. We're both high on Seattle. We think we're going to get a good showing from Seattle this year. They come into Dallas and we both give Dallas the win in the Dome against Seattle in week 13. This could be a potential NFC playoff preview type of game. These are two teams yes. that I think we're both, you know, kind of high on this year. And this is one of those games, too, where location matters. If the game was being played out in Seattle, maybe one or both of us would have picked it differently. But in Dallas, we're going with the Cowboys. We talked about the division games. We talked about the splits. Week 14 is where it comes in. We gave Philly the win in Philly in week nine. You already gave us a preview on your pick this year. I agree with it. I think these are home-home splits, and Dallas wins at home in this third of three home games. Yeah, I mean, I think the Eagles and Cowboys are going to kind of be neck and neck and really have a tight divisional race this year, and they're going to split that home-home series. Dallas at Buffalo. Prescott versus Allen is how this one will be played up. I think the defenses are going to make a lot of difference in this game. It's cold in Buffalo come week 15. Maybe not as cold as it's going to get, but it's cold, and I don't think the Cowboys like it, and I think the Cowboys actually drop this one to Buffalo in week 15. Cowboys versus Bills. I mean, I love this matchup. Uh, This could be a potential Super Bowl preview type of game when you get a Cowboys versus Bills, especially late in the season like this, right, where both teams should be clicking on all cylinders, have all their things figured out. As long as they're healthy, this could be a Super Bowl preview. The last time the Bills played against the Cowboys was in Dallas on a Thanksgiving game. I was at that game, and the Buffalo Bills won that game. This year, up in Buffalo, I'm going to this game as well to go watch my Cowboys play against the Bills. So hopefully, I'll get a split this time in these last two times watching the Cowboys versus Bills. So I'm going to take the Cowboys to go up to Buffalo and win. You know, honestly, I hope you get your win. I do. I Because you're traveling, you're going to see it, marking you down. Cowboys win. I just don't think it's going to happen. Stay in the AFC East. After Buffalo, they go down to Miami. They go defrost, thaw out in Miami after that horrible Buffalo weather. I think they get warmed up. I think they beat Miami. You know, this kind of game for me, I mean, I'd love to pick my Cowboys because I do think that the Cowboys are the better team than the Dolphins. But again, location matters. Schedule matters. And like Last week, me calling it a possible Super Bowl preview type of game between the Bills and Cowboys. Maybe a slight letdown kind of game for the Cowboys having to travel down to Miami. I'm going to give the Dolphins in a mini upset. See, I've been waiting for this game because you really have been high on the Dolphins. Mm-hmm. I, I want to get to this Dolphins. Episode. We know Jacksonville is your, is your second team. It's your darling team. Miami is definitely right there in that third spot. They're ranking up there. You're really talking about Miami this year. You really like these guys. Last year, even even with all the games that Tua missed, they still made it to the playoff. I'll give Tua the benefit of the doubt. Hopefully he can stay healthy. And I think some people forget that all these superstars that they brought in recently, like it's not just Tyreek Hill. They recently added Bradley Chubb. And during this offseason, they traded for Jalen Ramsey. Like their roster is pretty loaded right now. Plus, there's these rumors going around that they might be the team that goes and grabs Dalvin Cook as well. Add him into the mix or another running back. I mean, on paper, this Dolphin team is very very good good enough to beat your cowboys says you not good enough for me detroit in week 17 comes to dallas i'm really looking forward to this game i can't wait to watch this game i hope it's as good as we're expecting i detroit i think is going to bring a little fire this year i'm actually having kind of a hard time with this game to be perfectly honest about it yeah i mean you know both of these teams expect to make the playoffs this year. This could be another, you know, like I said about the Seahawks game with the Cowboys, this could be another potential playoff preview type of matchup. The Lions actually favored to win their division this year, which is pretty crazy. Cowboys, you know, expected to battle with the Eagles. The game's in Dallas. I still think Dallas is the better team than Detroit when you really go right down the line. So, better team at home. Important game late in the season. Could mean something for the seeding also in the NFC. I'll take the Cowboys. I 100 100- 
percent agree with the fact that this is going to be an important game. This is going to have implications. This is going to be a dogfight. This one is going to make a difference between the playoff seeding for Philly and Dallas. And because it is such an important game, that's exactly why I'm going the other way. Look, I love Dak Prescott. I do, but I do not have a lot of faith with him in a pressure situation. I don't feel that historically he's really been able to come through for Dallas fans in games like this in week 17 with so much on the line. Prescott blows it. Detroit wins this game in Dallas. Yeah, I mean, you know, Dak has not proven to be clutch, so I can't really argue with you on that point. He's seems to play his worst football in the biggest moments, which as a Cowboy fan is very frustrating and very alarming. See if he can turn the tide. Week 18, they play Washington at Washington. Dallas lost to Washington in week 18 last year. I think they do it again. You went the other way because of the implications, because it's in Washington. Prescott not great in the clutch, but you got him coming through in this one in a game that is going to really possibly decide exactly where Philly and Dallas get seated. Yeah, I mean, I think it will mean something for Dallas. You know, when we look down this schedule and the way I picked my Cowboys, there's not very many losses on the schedule, but the Eagles, obviously a great contender as well. They're not going to have too many losses either, so I still think the Cowboys might have to win this one, and despite all the wins I gave them, will it be enough to win this division? Three losses you gave them, 14-3. and three. That's a that's a nice record. That's pretty hefty there, Adam Holtz, mm-hmm. for your Dallas Cowboys. Go back and listen to the Pittsburgh episode. That's my, my Steeler team. Maybe I shouldn't be surprised here. Dallas going 14-3. and three. When you hear it, when you see it, because again, we do this game by game, we do it live. Still feel good about it? Yeah, I mean, I feel good about it. It's probably, you know, a couple more than most would think that they're going to win. But look, they won 12 games last year. I have reason to believe they can be as good, if not better than last year. So getting two extra wins than the year before is not like crazy outlandish. Let's remember too, they added Brandon Cooks that stretches the field for the offense, something that they were missing last year. And they get Stephon Gilmore, former defensive player of the year, award winner, play on the other side of dig. That CB2 spot was one of their big weaknesses last year as long as Gilmore can stay healthy it won't be a weakness this year I already mentioned Maisie Smith run stopper in the middle the Cowboys addressed their weaknesses from last season they may not have made any flash moves like Jerry Jones is used to doing but they truly did address the issues from a season ago so watch out for the Cowboys I absolutely could not agree more they absolutely did a great job addressing their weaknesses and to that point I have them finishing at 12 and 5 again that two game difference as you mentioned Will it be enough? That is the question that you have brought up that people are going to be wondering about. We're going to answer it in the next episode. Philly's up next. We just went through Dallas 12 and 5 for me, 14 and 3 for Adam. And we're going to see if it's enough to win the division. NFC East wraps up in the next episode. Make sure you join us. Go check out what Adam has to say about this and the rest of the NFL at Sports Kita. You can find them at Adam Hole Sports on Twitter. This is That Effin Sports Show. Find us everywhere using Kita. Keyword EFIN. Billy coming up next. NFC East wraps up. Everybody take care.